I'm Chad Kalecki with the uh, CK Investment Club, and today we're talking to Bitcoin J, who runs Bitcoin Daily, and uh, what his take is on the current market, how he's playing that, and also what he, the business he's built. So, Jay, if you want to go ahead and get us started with telling us like what Bitcoin Daily is today and how it came to be. Yeah, for sure, man. Thank you. I'm known around. I've been known for years as Jay. So uh, then Bitcoin J just kind of became the thing since I was into into Bitcoin. Basically, the, the way I built my brand and the, the whole idea behind the business for my brand was, you know, I got really obsessed with Bitcoin probably back in like 2016. And, you know, the first thing that always crosses my mind anytime I get into any type of field is how and is there, you know, a void in this in this niche where I can, you know, bring a solution and possibly build a business around it? Because like Bitcoin is all about mining, right? And then, you know, you you mine Bitcoin and you make money. So, you know, one of my favorite things that 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 I've ever read, one of my favorite quotes and, you know, stories, what goes back to, you know, when the whole gold rush period, which everybody was coming over to the United States to mine for gold. And then most people mistakenly believe that the people that were mining for gold were the ones that made the most money. But in actuality, the people that were making the most money during that era were the people that were selling shovels and other materials to mine for gold. So that's always my first thought anytime I come across any opportunity or any business, any niche is, is there an opportunity here to sell shovels? So that's kind of how Bitcoin daily got started. And it just kind of took off from there, you know, and we do, we do everything from uh, trading, from educating people who are brand new to the space to educating people that are more advanced and are, are wanting to trade actively and stuff like that. So guys, uh, today uh, we're gonna go through a lot of topics. Uh, me and Jay spent a good amount of time planning this out. And so we're gonna hit some, like the long-term view of crypto, how he trades, his strategies, technical analysis. We're gonna tap on security a little bit. I know a lot of us have been thinking about that lately. And then uh, just a, a tad on altcoins. So Jay, if you want to go ahead and get us started on the uh, the long term view, like w let's talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum one year out, two years out, five years out. What are you thinking? My view is going to be a little bit biased because I am very bullish on not only Bitcoin but just cryptocurrency in general, you know, and and definitely Ethereum. If if you guys don't know, today there was an update in the Ethereum network, which is actually very, very bullish in the long term because it's creating, basically they're going to start burning coins to lower the, the network fees when you're making transactions. And that's also in return going to create scarcity in Ethereum. So long term, very bullish on Ethereum. I think I can see it hitting you know, 10,000 plus, you know, very soon in the long term. I think that's pretty much a given at this point. You know, on Bitcoin, I'm in the same I'm in the same ballpark. Bitcoin, I believe I believe it's only a matter of time before we hit the six figure mark, before we hit cross 100,000. I think it's even a possibility. It, there is a case scenario where we could hit 100,000 by the end of this year. Now, a couple of factors would have to come into play like Tesla accepting, starting to accept Bitcoin again. And then one of the, the big companies getting involved in the space like Amazon. There was rumors about Amazon recently getting involved with crypto. There's been tons of rumors about Apple. So if one of these, one of those two companies or another big company starts either, you know, implementing crypto into their system, implementing it or adding it into their balance sheet or anything like that, I think that the Tesla accepting Bitcoin again, plus one of those other catalysts is what takes Bitcoin to that next level. So what's your case for Ethereum to 10,000? Because I have a similar view. So like I said, you know, today there was an update on the, in the Ethereum network and, and that's not all. In uh, next year comes the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade, which is a major overhaul. Basically, you're, you're, they're, gonna, they're going to take Ethereum from proof of work to proof of stake, meaning that you no longer will have to, to have computers mining. Now it's going to be the mining is going to be done just by holding, by staking Ethereum. Um, so that's also going to be very big for Ethereum. That's going to make Ethereum a lot a lot greener, which is a big thing that they're that's against Bitcoin right now. And uh, and with that upgrade, I believe that 
is what's going to take Ethereum to 10K. It could be next year. You know, you know, the crypto market moves fast, so it could possibly be as soon as next year in 2022. And the amount of technology that's been built on that platform exactly. um, is, in my mind, what's going to accelerate it. Yeah. I mean, the the, uh, the money moves towards the tech, you know, through exactly. history. And, and uh, everything is basically built on Ethereum. Like, not everything, but a lot of stuff is built on Ethereum. And Ethereum is, is basically all the tech. So I compare Ethereum to, like, the NASDAQ in the stock market, for example. And Bitcoin's probably more like the S&P 500. So you, uh, you hold crypto, but you also trade uh, yes. fairly often. Are you day trading or is it more on a weekly basis? Yeah, so I do both. I day trade. I, I could swing trade. I could just be scalping. It all depends on the market. You know, different market structures, you know, require different strategies. So I, I do. I think the best strategy is, is being able to do a little bit of, of all of them at the right time. So you, you, you have to be adapting with the markets. So, for example, like when the markets were really down at that point, you don't want to really be trading. You can be taking short trades. But I think at that point, when there's such a big drop, like we saw recently, the best things that you can do at that point is to load up for your long term investments. So during this drop in the last couple of months, I just been dollar cost averaging at different support levels as it dropped down and just continuing to build up a massive position in all the projects that I really, really believed in. So my main two holdings are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Those are the, my main two holdings because I think those are the leaders of the market, right? Bitcoin is the king of the crypto market and Ethereum is basically the king of the altcoin market, right? The entire market follows those two coins. So those are, you know, my biggest two positions. Everything else, I, I do have positions in other altcoins, but those are a smaller portion of my portfolio, I would say under 10% because my biggest focus is in Bitcoin and Ethereum at this point. So, uh, I want to get into the technical analysis that you do, because I know yep. that's a big part of your your rule set uh, with right. trading. And uh, so if you want to go ahead and share some charts with us and show yeah, us for sure. Bitcoin, Ethereum, what technical analysis you're doing, what what type of candlesticks, all of that. Yeah, for sure. So I do I do most of my technical analysis and everything on tradingview.com. This is a pretty pretty simple pretty simple app to to be able to to do a simple analysis or complicated however you want. I could do this, you know, right here from my computer. I could do it from the TradingView app and I can even pull it up um, in my car. I have it, I have the ability to pull up the browser in the car and watch the charts while I'm driving, which is, I don't recommend, but it is an option. But basically, so right now, this what, what we're looking at right here, this is Bitcoin. So this is the Bitcoin chart right now. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let me uh, take off some of these drawings here that I made. But basically, this is currently where we are. I'm looking at the daily chart right now. And what we saw was this huge write up all the way to the top where we topped out at around 65,000. And then the, you know, the drop, which was led by uh, Tesla and Elon Musk and uh, China, a lot of FUD coming from China, you know, a lot of things about Bitcoin not being green, a lot of things about Bitcoin mining being banned in China. So that's mostly what led up to this huge, huge drop. So after consolidating for a while, kind of in an accumulation phase right here, we've seen a jump back up. Now, if you look at this pattern during this consolidation period here, it's kind of a, a falling wedge here. So if you look up what a falling wedge is, it's a very uh, easy to spot pattern. It's, it's very popular in all markets. Falling wedges are usually sign of, of reversal from its current trend, right? So the trend was down, you know, the falling wedge kind of started popping up here and it's something that we started looking at. And then you see the breakthrough and you'll notice here, as soon as we broke right through this, this uh, resistance here, it's just been all green from there. So that kind of confirmed this falling wedge pattern at this point. Now we're back up here and you'll notice that there's a descending resistance line that's coming all the way from the previous all time high at 65. So you'll see after that first initial drop, we tried to bounce back up. We went up to about 60K, which has been 
another very you know big resistance you can see we've been rejected many times there um so we got rejected there and then you know we haven't been able to get past that level so now we have that descending line together with this this right here this is a fibonacci level so if i zoom out a little bit more you'll see that this is a 0 0.382 fibonacci retracement level so that's that's again fibonacci levels are very very important when it comes to trading because they're used very frequently so if enough people agree on certain tools then that's why you have kind of reactions like this at these at these Fibonacci levels. Another thing is we're 42,000, kind of the area that we're at right now is a previous all time high that we got rejected from right there. But you'll notice that when we did break through that that level, look how big that candle is right here. This was a huge candle that we got right here, almost a 20% candle. It ran up $7,682 in one day, right? So this is a daily candle. So I'm expecting right now kind of something similar here. So if we look at both of these, we'll, we'll see that it's struggling kind of at that same level. If we can get a breakthrough on that, I'm expecting to see something very, very similar where we just get a big, massive candle that can run us up to around 46 to 48,000. You know, the top probably being that $50,000 range, which is a big psychological number. And it's actually the next Fibonacci level up here. So that's currently what I've been watching, what I've been looking at. You know, we had 10 green candles in a row, which hasn't been done. We haven't seen this in the market since 2013. So that's very, very, you know, it's something very rare to see. And then we got a pullback. So some people were kind of, you know, freaking out a little bit about the pullback. But you have to remember that pullbacks are part of a natural, healthy market structure. There's always going to be pullbacks. And, and the pullback was honestly just another opportunity to load up again here at this $38,000 uh, minor support here as it pushes back up. So you see today that we're at around that 40, 41,000 level. We still have to break through this. So if we don't break above 42, we could still get pushed down again until we finally break above that. I was seeing something very similar as you with this current uptrend and just waiting yeah. for those confirmations. And uh, I jumped in right before that little dip yeah, uh, right here and then instantly got out because uh, the, there wasn't enough confirmations yet. And so you jumping in, uh, so Jay actually jumped into the, uh, the CK Investment Club premium channel. He's been giving us like every couple of days an update and he came in and set up his projections and uh, I exited right away and kind of waiting for those, those confirmations again before entering. Yeah. So should we look at Ethereum now? Because uh, yeah. Ethereum, yeah. on the other hand, is going straight straight up. Yeah, so Ethereum was was the other one that I that I spoke about here in in the investment channel. And at the time, I think when I when I gave the first update, we're at like twenty five hundred, and we're currently sitting at twenty eight hundred. So I kind of I had the idea my my price target during this in the short term here was three k. Uh, we're sitting at at twenty five hundred at the time, and I gave a, a target of around three thousand dollars, and we're currently sitting at twenty eight twenty eight. So that's still my my price target there for Ethereum. Again, if we kind of zoom out a little bit here, we can kind of see the structure a little bit clearer on what's been going on. We obviously had the big drop here, and now we've kind of it looks like we had like a double bottom pat pattern here, which is again another reversal signal, and we've just kind of been you know very very green leading up to today's update. Which you know I've been telling people since we got this drop, I've been telling people like this is your opportunity to load up on you know on ethereum because there's an update coming and the prices are going to go up so even if you look uh, back in history at any time ethereum has done any type of network updates after the updates the price has always gone up so i'm very bullish here and you can see if if you're looking here you you'll see that we're about to get to the same we're basically at the same level that we were here before where we got rejected so there is some resistance here and it's very close to this fibonacci level here as well You'll see it's the same level that Fibonacci level as Bitcoin, the, the 0 0.382. And then what, what another thing you'll notice here is the volume. So this is kind of uh, like the volume interest, you know, how many people are making transactions at these prices, right? So you're, you're going to notice that this starts to, to drop off here. And one thing that I'm watching very, very closely here 
is this right here. Look at this drop off from here to here. Look at this drop off. There's a huge gap here. So I believe that once we get above $3,000, we should shoot basically straight up here. This is where volume comes back in. So I'm thinking we shoot, if we can break above $3,000, we could easily gap up all the way up to $3,500 in Ethereum. The only thing that, the only thing left to, to get through is that 3K level right now. So with your, your day trading type strategies, are you entering right now or are you still waiting a couple more days to get that confirmation? Yeah, so in Ethereum, I'm I'm currently in a trade. I uh, I gave uh, the same the same trade that when I spoke about it in the investment group, um, I was entering above twenty five hundred. So this was my level to enter. I wanted to get on a breakout above here um, because that was a big Fibonacci level. That's the fifty percent level there. Um, so once we got that break above twenty five hundred, which was also a big psychological level. Um, I've been writing it ever since, and I've been taking profits on the way. Basically, my strategy is this. I, I like to enter uh, with momentum, um, you know, with volume, and I like to enter on a breakout of a major level or a major, uh, a breakout of a range, a breakout of, you know, any type of strong resistance, psychological levels, you know, things like that. Um, so I entered at 2,500, and then what I'm doing right now is I'm taking profits basically on 25% of my position every $100 at this point. So I took profits at 2600, I took profits at 2700. I took 25% at tw at 2600, 25% 25 at 27, 25% 25 at 2800. So I have 25% of my position left. Now, what I do with the with the last 25% of my position is what I like to call maximizing, you know, letting letting that run. It's called leaving a runner. So I'm leaving a runner all the way up to 3000 and if i see this break above 3000 look remember there's a huge gap here so if i see this break above 3000 i'm adding back on everything that i've sold down here i'm adding back on above 3000 because that's another breakout entry which i believe can run up all the way to uh 3500 so um right now i'm in a position i i think i showed you guys i showed it in the chat uh earlier today um, and, uh, I'm up very nicely on that position and, um, and I'm, I'm waiting on the, on the next one up here. So, uh, you trade with leverage, uh, Correct. with this, because say so you take advantage of the extremely high volatility that right. is in the crypto market. So how does that look? Is that something you can show us at all? Yeah. So leverage is a, is a tricky thing because I only, I only recommend it if, you're an experienced trader, you know, that you've been doing it for a good amount of time and you're consistent with your profitability. Because what I always tell people, what leverage does is it, um, it magnifies basically, right, your results. So if you're a profitable trader and you use leverage, then you're gonna make more money. But if you're a losing trader and you use leverage, then you're gonna lose more money. So it it's really is a double-edged sword you have to you have to kind of be honest with yourself on where you are as a trader and 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 then you know kind of go with there kind of go from there because it's it's so dangerous if you don't know what you're doing but basically what what I do I'm I'm using leverage to my advantage because I've been trading now for about probably 7 8 years and I've been doing it full time since 2006 16 2017 around there i've been i've been trading full time you know i haven't worked a regular job the the 9 to 5 in almost 10 years at this point right and i've just kind of taken advantage of of these breakout and momentum trades and they're really not that hard it's not that hard to do once once you have experience once you have the discipline the di i would say that the discipline is the hardest thing but um if you do want to know because leverage, you do have to kind of go uh, in depth and I don't want to spend too much time on it. But I do have a YouTube channel where where I, I cover all of these topics. So on on YouTube, I have Bitcoin Daily is my YouTube channel. And if you go to my playlist here, I have a trading tutorials playlist and I have tutorials for all sorts of stuff, including how to buy the dip, 
how to calculate your position size, you know, Bitcoin options expiries, which are which are kind of important in this uh, in the game in, in this market, you know, understanding candlesticks, how to how to which is the, the basics for when you when you want to learn how to trade and how to read the chart. And right. and I have this one here, which is leverage explained, you know, how to trade Bitcoin with leverage. And okay. I go through that, you know, one by one, like I, I try to make everything kind of as simple as possible for any beginner to understand. Now, uh, I'm assuming that you have a very strict rule set because yes. um, you pull the emotion out of this completely. Exactly. So is is that something uh, it's like what are a couple rules that you just like you live by and you will not break them yeah so i mean the first thing when, when anytime i'm entering a trade i want to calculate my position size and i want to know exactly how much i'm risking so my my rules and i think this is probably i think risk management should always be the number one rule in anything i think you know being able to manage a risk is probably what makes or breaks you long term if you cannot manage your risk you're not going to be a winning trader. You're probably going to blow up your account, right? People are sometimes too focused on uh, when to buy it and when to enter that they forget they throw risk management out the window. And I tell a lot of people, if, if you just perfect your risk management, then of course, entry and exit are important. But your risk management, how much you're risking per position, per trade, you know, just doing that, you might profit or you might be break even, but you might be profitable just by managing your risk properly. So you have to, first of all, I have a 5% rule, right? And that what that means is I never risk more than 5% of my trading capital on one trade, right? That doesn't mean that 5% I'm, I'm risking 5% on every single trade. It means that 5% is the maximum that I will risk on any one trade. So, you know, then after that, then it comes down to, okay, how confident am I in this trade? And then that's how I figure out how much, I, how much risk I want to take per trade. So, you know, if I'm very confident, in the trade, I'll be risking somewhere between three to 5%. If I'm like kind of, you know, I'm like I'm pretty confident, but then, then I'll be around two to three. If I'm like not that confident in it, then I'll be around 1%. And, and under that, if I'm not confident at all, then I'm not entering a trade, you know? So that's probably, I would say the biggest thing, I think just managing your risk, you know, knowing how much you're risking per trade and, and always knowing always knowing exactly where you're going to exit, whether it's a winning trade or a losing trade. If you don't know where you're exiting before you enter the trade, you should not be entering the trade. I think that's that's probably the, the, the next thing that needs to be top priority. You should have, you should be writing down your entire trading plan before you even enter the trade, right? So I think uh, if you get started and if you, you prioritize those rules, which for me has been kind of my, the foundation to, to, you know, my success in trading, I think that that can make your life a lot easier because when you're, when you're risking less, then you're not as emotional. When you're not as emotional, then you're making more, you know, logical decisions. And the better your decision making is, the better, the more success you're going to have. So it all kind of, you know, it's it, it's all together. It's all interconnected. You just have to start. I think the, 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 the place to start is risk management and then kind of work your way from there. Yeah, anyone who, who is early and getting into, into this, and especially with crypto, play with a very small amount of money. You will learn equally as much. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will lose in the beginning. Like it's part of the learning process. So yeah. a yeah. big topic um, that I know a lot of us are, are thinking about is security. Uh, I know you have a lot of uh, your net worth in the markets, uh, especially the crypto markets. And um, I would like to hear what you do to keep it secure. Yeah, I think the first thing, you know, is there's a hardware wallet. There, there's a lot of hardware wallets out there in the market. And that's that's probably the one of the safest ways to secure your Bitcoin. But at the same time, you never my my rule that I use personally is not to have all your crypto in any one wallet. I think that's probably the best uh, way to, to kind of secure yourself. I, I have I have multiple different wallets with whether it's a whole hard wallet. You know, whether it's, you know, on on uh, one of these exchanges or something like that. And on exchanges, I try to keep very small amounts of crypto. But I try to, again, have them in different areas just in case 
for some reason or another, something terrible happens and there's a hack, something goes down. You know, we don't know, right? We've heard of all these horror stories which hold a lot of people back. I've personally, thank God, knocking on wood, right? I've never had any issues. I've never experienced anything like that where I've lost crypto because of anything like that in the years that I've been in the market. But I know I know everyone has heard has heard these stories. So I think the best way to minimize that risk is to have crypto in multiple different wallets, including inc have it in hard wallets, the majority of any crypto that you're holding and then the rest, you know, on an exchange. If you're using it to trade, don't put it all on one exchange, have it on on, in, on different exchanges and uh, things like that. Okay, so I mean, I have a similar strategy. If you have it in 10 places, um, when the one hack happens, which could definitely happen, you're only exposed by 10%. Right. So that that's the uh, it's the way to provide some security for yourself. Yeah. So uh, I wanna kind of briefly graze on altcoins. Now, I know that uh, from what I've seen is they pretty much follow Ethereum. And uh, I'm curious what your take is on them. Are you spending a lot of time looking at them? Are you trading them like you are Ethereum and Bitcoin? Just give us your rundown. Yeah. So, so like I like I said earlier, my my biggest holdings are going to be Bitcoin and Ethereum. And now, you know, for everybody, it's going to be a little bit different. There's a lot. There's some people that prefer altcoins over, you know, Bitcoin. They say Bitcoin's too expensive or whatever the case may be. Now, I, I mean, I don't really look at it as an it's too expensive point of view because, you know, a 10 percent move is a 10 percent move regardless of where your money is. Right. So Bitcoin could easily move 10, 20 percent. Now, in the altcoin market, they, they are more volatile because they're going to be following Bitcoin and kind of exaggerating what Bitcoin does usually for the most part. So if Bitcoin goes up, you know, 5%, altcoins might go up 15%, 10%, 15%. If Bitcoin drops 5%, altcoins are probably going to drop like 25%, right? So it's always going to be an exaggerated move of whatever Bitcoin does for the most part, not always. Like, let's pull up the Bitcoin chart here. And then let's kind of go from Bitcoin. Let's look at Ethereum. And you can see the similar patterns. If you look at uh, Cardano, Cardano has a, a, a similar pattern. It's not going to be exact. Look at BNB similar pattern, polka dot, you know, you could go down the list. They all have similar patterns. So when I'm doing analysis, my focus is always on Bitcoin and Ethereum because everything else is just going to follow. So it's not that important to spend that much time on it. Now, when it comes to putting your money in altcoins, I, I don't mind. I have my money in some of the top 10, top 20 altcoins that, you know, some of the projects that I understand and really believe in. But I don't like to put too much time looking for, you know, gems or looking for the next Bitcoin, next Ethereum, because, you know, when you, it, it does take hours, if you really want to understand a project, it takes hours of time that you have to put into it in order to understand that, to really understand what it is. And I don't want to be and, you know, out of the ten, out of 10 projects that you do that for, maybe one of them is actually going to hit. Right. So instead of me spending that time, you know, digging through all these coins, I'd rather be spending my time just following Bitcoin and Ethereum and trading them because in the long term, I'm going to end up making more money trading Bitcoin and Ethereum it's themselves than trying to spend time looking for the next altcoin that's going to blow up and go 100%, right? You know, right now my my Bitcoin and Ethereum, I think I'm up like I think I was up I have put a a screenshot in the um in the investment club but I think I was up like 400% or something like that on that trade. So I rather just trade with leverage than be trying to look for the next altcoin that's going to 10x. You know, and that's just from from me personally, you know, some people don't have the time to be trading, might not have the knowledge and they just they just want to put their money in altcoins and see if one of them pops. That's fine. But understand that you're it's it's basically you're kind of I call them lottery tickets. You're putting your money in one of the coins, seeing if you win or not, and then putting your money in the next one. So uh, that's kind of, you know, my take on on altcoins. I mean, if uh, if anybody believes that that crypto is a speculation, then altcoins are speculation times 10. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a it's a very common thing with stock trading is if you try to follow 40 stocks, 
you're not going to do well at all. But if you have five or 10 and you know them extremely well and you just know how they move, uh, you're going to do much better in the long term. Yeah. And that's uh, Jay has a similar strategy here. Yeah, with exactly. Because it's 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 what what that saying is. Jack of all trade is the master of none. So I I've learned from the stock market to just focus on a handful of stocks or coins then try to follow all these different coins, you know, what, whatever coin or whatever stock is is hot that for that day or that week or whatever it is, you know? So Jay, I'm gonna uh, go into some of these questions here everybody's okay. asking. Yeah. So the first one is from, from Jimmy. Uh, are there any suggestions for limiting the trading costs of buying and selling transa- uh, crypto with transaction fees? And he said that the fees seem higher than stocks. It is, they, it, the, the fees do stack up. And that is one of the things that that I have run into from at this point, there's really no way around fees like that. I guess because of where we're at right now, if you really want to trade with no fees, the only way I really know how is is probably like, you know, Robin Hood or something. But if you're if you're on Robin Hood, you're not actually you don't actually own the crypto that you're trading. You own anytime you buy crypto on Robin Hood, you own basically a paper that's tied to the value of the crypto that you're buying and selling. So you so you have to know that if you're buying, you know, on Robin Hood, you don't own that crypto. That's you're you're, you're buying something that's tied to the value of the crypto. But you can trade there without transaction fees. Now, if you're looking to trade with leverage, there's that I know of, there's there's no place that doesn't have any fees. So that's just kind of part of the game. Now, there, there are kind of little tricks that you can use. For example, I trade uh, mostly on an exchange called Bybit. And what they do, and, and I think a, a lot of exchanges kind of do it something similar, that there's a um, there's a maker fee, I think it's what it's called, maker fee and a taker fee. I don't I don't remember the, the exact terminology, yeah, but I know, it. yes. But so so basically, if you're just market buying and market selling, then you're getting charged a fee for using the market buys and market sells because you're just taking whatever is the best price at the time. And if if you're if you're the maker of the price, right? you're using at you, you you would be using limit orders so you're setting the price and you're letting the price get to that level and then it's triggering so it depends on the exchange i know on bybit you actually get paid a fee for being the maker so you get a maker fee they pay you for creating the order and once it gets fulfilled you get paid now it's not a lot but you don't pay fees so you have to check with the exchange that you're trading on and see what if they have anything like that, um, and and then just use that to your advantage. Jordan's question is, what do you think about earning interest on crypto holdings like with Gemini, BlockFi, Celsius? What's your take on them? Yeah, that's great. I think that's that's great for um, if you're just holding crypto. You know, why not make some some extra passive income on it? You know, make extra passive crypto on it, right? At the end of the day, what you what you want to do, the goal is to generate as much crypto as possible so if you can set up your crypto to make more crypto without you having to lift a finger then definitely do it i've done it i i've done it and i'm doing it currently i've used blockfi and celsius and gemini so i've used all three i think right now the biggest the biggest return is on celsius right now i think they're around six percent 6.25 I'm not sure on the exact number because it does vary. They do change from time to time. I think because I think BlockFi is around for Bitcoin. I think it's around 4%. I think Gemini is also around 4%. And it also depends on how much crypto you have. So um, they have different tiers. So if you have a lot of crypto, you're going to be earning a lot less. So it just it all depends. You, You should take a look at all of those and see which one is best for your situation. Yeah, like my experience so far, Celsius definitely has some of the higher rates, but the the user interface is Mm. complete junk. So you're going to deal with a lot of uh, a lot of headaches just trying to use the platform. Yeah. Whereas BlockFi has been reducing the rates. I'm still using it. But the one stable coin they're still paying over 8% on is the uh, DAI. Yeah. So I converted to DAI. And what I'm doing is collecting interest in the form of Ethereum, because I do believe more in Ethereum than Bitcoin uh, as far as how much it can grow as a percentage of right. as compared to its current value. And then these all you have all these other ones. And this also goes back to the, you know, the security concept, right? Put a little bit into each right. to get a feel for them. And also it diversifies your risk on getting right. hacked. So other than uh, Bybit, 
Do you use any other exchanges? Um, so all my trading, my my day trading is done on Bybit. To go in and out of crypto, I use Gemini. Okay. So if I if I need, you know, if I want to cash out anything to to a bank or anything like that, then then I use Gemini for that. I I use Binance as well for some some altcoins and and I use I have some on uh, crypto.com which is an app. It's a pretty simple app. It's not too bad. Now the the fees are kind of sketchy, so I would I would look into how they charge their fees cuz the prices are a little weird when you go to cash out and move it out somewhere. I feel like they uh they either like they they mark it up on their end. So so like when you cash out, it's not it's not the exact amount that you have on there cuz they they kind of they say that they don't charge fees for transactions, but then they they do something with the price that's not the actual price which that's how they make their profits. So you got to be careful with that. I saw that on crypto.com, but those, those are the ones that, that I currently use. And we have another question, which is what tools are you using to manage and track your portfolio? So for managing and tracking, I currently use, it's called Delta. So if you go, if you go into the store, the app store, the Google play store, whatever it is, uh, you can, you can check out. I think if you just put Delta, Delta, it should come up as Delta, like the airlines. That's the one that, that I've been using now for the last probably like two or three years. Other before that I was using Blockfolio and yeah, those, those are the two that I use to to track and anything that has to do with tracking my portfolio in crypto. Here we have a couple more questions from Michael. When you talk about risk management and having a 3% position size, is that 3% used for the collateral before leverage or is it 3% after leverage? Or is the 3% being the downside loss limits? When you're talking about risk, you don't want to you want to calculate your risk before you don't want to take into account leverage. So you want you want to leverage just a tool, right? It, it should have nothing to do with your risk, right? It should it should not change your risk management. So if you're if you're using three percent, if you're risking three percent, then that's going to be the, your collateral, right? Your the, what you're going to put into the position as your risk is going to be three percent. Don't add on, you know, the leverage and then try to try to do it with the leverage, and because then that gets that just gets way too mixed up. So. You know, if you have, if you're going to risk $300 on the trade, then that should be, that's, that's it. You know, without taking leverage into account, leverage comes in later, $300 remains $300, right? Uh, that's going to be the risk. So always calculate it without leverage. Don't leverage just comes in after. We have a question from Eileen. How are you thinking about capital gains and trading versus just holding? Um, it's again, it's, you know, capital gains is, is, is a part of it. It's something that, you know, unfortunately, unless you, you move somewhere where, where they don't charge it, one of, one of these crypto friendly countries, you're going to have to pay regardless of whether it's crypto stocks, real estate, doesn't matter what it is. What, what I owe the way I see it is I rather pay capital gains on a hundred thousand dollars extra that I made than not make an extra hundred thousand dollars and not pay capital gains. That's the way I see it. I don't mind paying the taxes. That's that's part of being, you know, an American, part of living in in, in this country. So that yeah, that's the way, that's, that's the way I look at it. I don't I don't I take it into account. It's it's kind of part of what you have to accept when you're when you're going to be trading. And and you just gotta gotta you know you gotta deal with it. Don't let that be something that stops you from trading, you know, and from making extra extra income because you're you don't want to pay capital gains, you know. Like I said, I, I'd rather pay capital gains on $100,000 and not pay capital gains on nothing. So, Right. That's exactly the point. If you're making money, then what does it matter? Okay. Uh, got a clarification question here from Kathy. How does Bybit make money if uh, you're not paying fees? I believe you are paying fees with Bybit, right? Yeah. So so you're, you're paying fees with Bybit. The, the thing is, there's there's a maker fee and a taker fee. So if you're the one that's making the order, you're 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 making the order and then it gets filled, you get, you know, paid a fee. And now the person who bought your order, right? They're they're the taker. They're taking the order that you created, so they're paying a fee. So, you know, they get Bybit gets a fee, then they pay you a little small percentage of it, and that's it. They're, trust me, Bybit makes lots of money. <laughs> 
I mean, that goes back to the guys who provide the shovels to the gold miners, right? Exactly. Yeah. So Bybit is yeah, Bybit Bybit is giving you a little cut. It's so small that that you know you're not even gonna notice what it is. It, it's it's very small, and they're they're keeping the majority of those fees. So don't worry, Bybit is making lots of money. So I got a question from Fiona on liquidity pools and staking, and just to let you guys know, uh, in the future event, um, I know these. These two uh, individuals who are just doing amazing things in DeFi, uh, and they've created an entire site around it, and they're truly experts on liquidity pools and staking. So we'll try and bring them in to talk. But Jay, what are your thoughts on liquidity pools, staking, and which exchanges are the most secure? So I'm not. I haven't dove too deep into this, and I'd actually be interested in in, in you bringing in those guys and and me hearing yeah. them talk. I have. I do. I do staking, but I haven't done, you know, um, I haven't really dove in too much into liquidity pools and staking like that. Since my main holdings are around, are based around Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know, everything else is just kind of, you know, I just kind of hold it. I don't really do too much with it. And because they're just such, such, so much smaller, their position sizes. But I, I, I'm definitely, I, I'm definitely interested in learning more about that as well. Yeah, that's not my expertise. You know, I'm always 100%. If I don't know about something, you know, I defer to someone else with that. Right. I, everybody, I want to speak with Jay because he's, he's more of a classic trader but using the asset of crypto to do the trading and therefore taking advantage of some amazing volatility. And he's done extremely well and his education is extremely uh, valuable. And then for these yield farming, staking, you know, like new, it's almost a new world, that stuff. Right. I have a couple people who they do it full time. Hmm. They're making, the last I spoke during the bull run, they're making 1% on their total net worth per day. That's crazy. Absolutely ridiculous. It's different when you go into these bear markets, but they're, uh, we'll talk to them next. Yeah, for sure. I have uh, just a question from, from Helena here. What are your thoughts on SafeMoon? On SafeMoon? So, I mean, I actually met the team of SafeMoon at a, at a conference. We did a conference down in Miami earlier this year, probably around, I want to say March. March of this year. And and they were actually actually had a booth there and I, I spoke with them and stuff like that. You know, but again, it this goes back to speculation. Safe Moon is more of, of a speculation. And they have they have a great marketing team. And you know, they built really, really huge hype around this new coin that really has done nothing and has no, really nothing that's currently working at this point. But you know, I personally, and, I, and I've got this, I've gotten this question hundreds of times by now, right? I personally don't put my money in anything like that, where it's just based off of hype, because you'll see what happened with Doge, for example. And, and this, it's, this is another coin that's based on hype, right? Doge had the biggest hype man in the world, Elon Musk, and you know it's down 80% from its highs. And you, do you want to know when this when the sell off was when he did Saturday Night Live? So that was the tipping point for Doge here. And I told everybody I I am staying away. I will not touch Doge. If you did not get in it down here, do not touch it up here because this will it was only a matter of time before this happened. And a lot of people got mad at me and they were upset because they're they're saying that you know I was a hater of Doge and I'm like. I'm not a hater. It's just not. There's, there's. It's not a real project. There's nothing behind it. So I'm not yeah. saying Safe Moon is not a real project, but the reason that its price went crazy was based off of hype. So you have to know the difference between you know when it's based off of something real, when it's based off of hype. For those reasons, I stayed away from Doge. I stay away from Safe Moon, um, and and any any type of anything like that. Really, I stay away from. The thing about Doge does have merit is the brand recognition that it got. Right. I, you could walk down the street and say, hey, what do you think about Dogecoin? And people knew what it was. And so that's the only reason I even say it has merit, because right. as you said, there's really no utility. And it's uh, it blew up because of speculation. Right. But who knows? I, you know, I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it runs yeah, again at some point. It's, it's just been it's been around forever, man. It has Doge has been around I, over 10 years, I think. And the, and the crazy part is that one of the owners sold all of his Doge for, um, I think, like to buy a Honda Civic or something like that back in like 2015 or 2016. I don't remember exactly what year it was, but he sold all his Doge the previous bull run 
to buy a Honda Civic. So, you know, that should tell you enough about what that project is. Um, if one of its creators sold it for a Honda Civic. <laughs> right. <laughs> How could he have known? Yeah. It'd be picked out by Elon Musk. Yeah. And, and you know what? And it will run again. The thing is, you don't know when. Yeah. But if you are one of these people that you just want to, you know, throw money at something and that you don't mind losing now is when you when you would want to buy it, when it's down here you don't want to buy when it starts running you want to be the you want to be the people buying down here the same way that people were buying down here so you want to be the people buying at the bottom you don't want to be the suckers buying at the top so like the uh the next one that is starting to feel a little like doge um i don't know if it'll get that type of hype i know matic so Poly yeah. polygon which became matic is now getting endorsed by mark cuban yeah. So now you have another billionaire coming in here and trying to push a coin. And uh, I don't think this is the end of what we've seen of that happening. Yeah. And of course, these guys are making a fortune off of doing this. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And and I know I know Mark Cuban's been in, in multiple things, including Doge, that went really bad. So I wouldn't take his words. As, as anything very solid because I know I know he, as soon as he started accepting Doge it dropped 80 percent and uh, he was in another project where it was a uh what what was it called uh like they they just kind of disappeared and ran with the money type of thing um, yeah. and he was like complaining about it on CNBC or something like that saying that the, things need to be more regulated in a crypto market stuff like that so yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't jump into projects that I especially wouldn't jump in projects that celebrities are promoting because if a celebrity is promoting it, it's because they're getting paid to promote it. They don't just promote it because they believe in it. Right. You know, the last question before we close here today, Jay, is um, what's your structuring on your portfolio, like stocks as compared to crypto as percentages of your overall yeah. portfolio? Yeah. So uh, in the beginning, my stock portfolio, you know, was was overwhelmingly bigger than my crypto portfolio. And then as I started, I started, you know, accumulating more and more crypto prices and values started going up. And, and I started a, I built a business around crypto where I accept crypto as payment, you know? So I, so right now I do, I do a lot of marketing on social media and stuff like that for crypto companies and they pay in crypto. So, and anytime I get paid in crypto, I, I just act like that doesn't like it. It doesn't even exist. Right. I just add it to the portfolio. I don't take it out. So now my crypto portfolio is overwhelmingly <laughs> way bigger than my, than my stock portfolio at this point. I think right now I would say that my crypto portfolio is probably it's, it's over 50% of of I would say my net worth at this point, right? I've kind of put, you know, a lot of the majority of my eggs in, in a basket. And I know, I know a lot of people say like, there's always that, you know, don't put your eggs, all your eggs in one basket. But I've heard, and 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 one thing that I believe is, and this this has come from like Mark Cuban, you know, that since we just spoke about him, uh, Jerry Jones, you know, some of these billionaires when they were asked, you know, how did they become billionaires? Like, what what did they do? And and they were they're like, I put all my eggs in one basket, the one basket that I really, really believed in. And that's how I became a billionaire. So, you know, crypto is kind of that for me, you know, and since I'm still young, if I lose the money, I'm young enough to, to make it back where it's not going to hurt me long term. So, yeah, over over 50, 60, 70 percent maybe of my of my current current net worth is in crypto. But, you know, it's it's I've been able to to take money from crypto and, and use it. And I've put some in the stock market. I've put some in t into real estate. So I've, I've opened up different businesses because of my of my crypto money. So, you know, even though it is a big part of my net worth, it is something that I really, really believe in long term. And, you know, I think that if you want to get to that next level of wealth, um, there does have to be one thing that you can put a big you know, stake of yourself, a, a kind of a big bet on. And, and that's kind of what it takes to get there. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm a little more conservative in my approach. Uh, like I have only a 10% of my net worth okay. put into crypto and then about 25% or 20 now, as I reduced my position in commodities, uh, and commodities in the stock market, gold miners, 
silver miners, yeah, um, all different mining companies, and then you know a few other things uh, across the board to keep that more diversified approach. But I know you believe in this, and yeah. so when you believe in it, you put more of your uh, <laughs> yeah, portfolio man. into it. Yeah, man, I I I'm a huge believer in it, and I've been since 2016 when I really got into it and I got obsessed with it. And um, and I tell people all the time, man, crypto literally kind of changed my changed and saved my life, I believe, because I was I was in a I was in a period where I kind of didn't know where to go, didn't know what to do. I had, you know, multiple like, you know, failed businesses or businesses that weren't doing too good, you know, and and I kind of I, I was always looking for I was like, what? Like, I know I have there's something bigger. What is it? And it, it just I crossed I crossed paths with it one day and I've never looked back, man. And, and it's honestly changed my life. Well, Jay, I want to thank you for coming on today. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the great questions and attending. So this is uh, we will have another speaker, hopefully in a couple of weeks. I'm Chad Kalecki. This is the CK Investment Club. And I'll go ahead and share the video out to, uh, to everybody afterwards. Awesome, man. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.